All right, back for part two. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get this guy rolling here. So part two, I already uh, got everything else set up. Um, I was about to make that reverse.exe again, which you probably already have. Uh, if you're following along, you should already have that reverse.exe. I was about to just make that again. Let's roll back inside this box. So we're going to upload or um, yeah, set out port. Show options. Let me make sure everything's good. Run tag J. So I already have a session, everything created, which you should also already have a session if you've been following along. So if I go into my session one, then I can go ahead and upload uh, rev.exe, which you should already have uploaded. I go ahead and run that, and I should get that session created back. Uh, let's go ahead and do a run uh, period period slash rev.exe, or just rev.exe. I should be able to get a session back, and I do. Cool, so we know that works. Uh, let's go ahead and back on that, and we'll go ahead and go into sessions two, I take it. Session that guy. Sessions two, we're going to exit out of this one. We don't want that one actually up and running. We're going to do another run tag J. So our next part of this is to do a uh, service exploits weak registry permissions. We're going to pop back into here. Service exploits, we have weak registry, right? Weak registry permissions. So I did throw a winpeas.bat at it again, and I could not find anywhere in here that would actually tell us that there's weak registry permissions. Uh, it does have some registry stuff in here, but nothing in here actually showed that we had, you know, registry permissions. Check if you can modify any service registry, and that's not in here anywhere. It's not showing anything. Uh, just a bunch of uncoded service paths. So if we actually look at this guy, it's going to be reg service, which I feel like is going to be kind of a service. What are we actually doing here? Let's see here. So yeah, we are a reg ad. Okay. So pretty much we have overwrite the image path registry key to points. Okay. So pretty much what we're doing is we actually can um, check if we modify a reg service registry. So we can modify a service registry. And we also have uh, C program from Insecure Registry Service .exe. I mean, I guess if I saw that, you know, I would kind of know what to do next. But um, usually it's not that. It doesn't jump out of you like that. I couldn't really figure out any other way to see my permissions with the registry service. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's a thousand different ways. I couldn't see that. But let me go back into Sessions. Tech guys, Sessions 1. Let me get back into Sessions 1, do another shell. What we're going to do from here is we are now going to do a SCQC reg service. Let me go ahead and do a print connect real quick for this guy. Just like say, hey, this is what we're trying to do. This is what, you know, we want to do and everything. Throw him into here. Bam. Okay. And let me go ahead and do that SCQC reg service. So if I do that, I do see that it is local system, server start name. So we do have a... You know, we can tell that, yes, that will put us as a local system authority, so NT system authority on this machine. Um, so from there, could continue to try different stuff. So using access check.exe, which I think I actually have to re-upload that into here. I do. Okay. Let's do it with Control-Z, yes. Um, let me go ahead and do an upload access check. .exe, and I'll hop right back into there. I remember it's still connected to all my stuff over here. Pretty much if you're going from one video to the next, nothing's changed. So we go ahead and do a uh, regular back in the shell, do a DIR, and from here we do have our access check.exe. So I have that access check, so pretty much we're going to do an access check. Accept the EULA, UVWQK, HKLM system current control chat services, reg service. So on WinPs, it does say, hey, how to do different things with services. And we do have stuff like right here on this case, user stuff, you enable service, okay, modify service binary path, SC config, bin path, we can modify the path and everything, restart service. So I mean, we can do a lot of stuff, we can probably figure out exactly how to do everything from in there or we can follow the instructions that TriHackMe has given us so gracefully 
so nice to them and we'll just follow these instructions so we're going to go ahead and use that access check step to EULA and using the access check note that the registry entry for reg service is right over by NT authority slash interactive group essentially all logged on users so let's see if that is correct since the journal is going to report okay Effective permission for securable objects. Thanks. Um, I don't know what you're trying to tell me with that, but thank you. Right. Um, overwrite the image path registry key to point to reverse.exe, which we already have in here as a red.exe. And remember, we do have port 1111 running in the background. That's exactly what we're going to do, like right here, okay? So we're going to put him in there. To run like that. There, there. And there we go. Okay, so that's been added successfully. So, registry add HKLM, you know, at their Windows systems, um, certain ones you use HKLM, other ones like HKU, whatever. I forget what the other ones are. System, current controls that services, red service. This is just the path to it. Um, image path, okay. We're going to do red expand SZ. And then we're going to tell it, hey, where is this actually at? And that's not where ours is. So let's go ahead and actually do that again. Because we do not have ours in. So it's going to be slash F. Ours is actually just going to be rev.exe slash F. Like that. Because ours is sitting right here, right? Ours is already in here. Um, I guess we could do like a C that that user's user. We should probably do this actually just because it's going to actually changing the registry. So we'll do C users user desktop slash rev.exe. So this is good to do is it's now saying that this is like wherever the uh, registry information is for it. So whenever this runs, yes, whenever this runs it's actually going to uh, pull and grab that guy which should allow us to ultimately reg service start service and interpreter session three will open up and that does work like right there okay cool so let's go ahead and grab this all of this like right here and see yep sure did grab open up okay change registry path as shown when we start service and already had rev exe in the background, we get another interpreter session. Okay, so some interpreter sessions should now be system authority also. So let's go ahead and see. Ooh, and it died. Ooh, 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 ooh really now. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. Might have to do something where it might not be able to use that exact one like right there. So that's kind of, that will be something different. Um, don't know if I'm going to mess with it any more than that, but might not be able to use an actual interpreter session like right there. Yes. Uh, can we do that net start reg service? Might just have to hop out and migrate to something else like real quick. So that we have to actually go back to. Um, it's not going to be able to do anything because there is no. It's trying to call back to somebody that doesn't actually exist, huh? I don't know what the hell the tech app does, but it got something to open up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a um, get UID like real quick. Yes, we are at C system authority. And then we'll do a PS. Then we'll try and migrate something else. So, ooh, man, we got quick on this guy. We're going to try and migrate. We're going to grab something in the very beginning here. We are going to try and migrate to there. Spool SV. 
Let's go ahead and do a run pack J again. And we're going to go right back into... Actually, you know what? We're not going to do... Yeah, we can do that. Then we're going to do sessions 1, shell, and that start. Now, this isn't usually how you would do it, like right here. You would try to find, like, a more stable shell. <laughs> not just try to migrate, like, really quickly. I'll just see if this will work. Oh. October session one is closed. That died. It looks like it doesn't like to have more than one session open, but we had a bunch of sessions open, open before, but it's also moving slower this time, too. So, session five is staying open, though, once we migrated, so that's cool. And we are at T-System Authority, also. Um, I kind of don't want to be at T-System Authority, because I feel like that's going to mess up the rest of the, I, It's not really going to mess them up, but... Is your service executables? I mean, I, we still go through the motions, huh? It's not really going to mess them up, is it? Insecure service executables. So, you know what? It's going to mess it up. In my eyes, it's going to mess it up. So, we're going to do a set L4444. Sessions 5. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's 5. Uh, now, we'll go ahead and do a run back J. Then we're going to go uh, session 5. Uh, shell. DIR, and we're going to get that uh, shell.exe working in there first, because I don't like that. What we got going on here? Okay, maybe not. Um, okay. Okay, well, that one sucks. So it looks like we are, oh, it looks like it actually closed out closed out itself. Oh, what is this? Yeah. RDP closed out itself. What if after an hour if it just closes down? That's weird. Are we getting our session opened up? Failed to connect. Still actually connect to it now, huh? So this continues to happen. Looks like we are not going to be doing it like right now, now are we? Ted 10 10 4385. That's 10 10 4385. User, password 321. You can always terminate the box, go back into it, and could just try it like that. I guess we'll do that. We'll terminate the box, we'll hop back into it. Alright. You guys gotta see how I do it from the beginning, where I have to actually, you know, go through every single thing, every single time, because I'm trying to leave off right where I left off last time, so I have to kind of prepare this. A little bit advanced here, but yeah, that's weird. A little strange that this happened. So we're gonna wait a minute for this guy to open up. And yeah. there. I have a little freeze action going. Okay, so we got our IP address going and we'll try to ping it first. I'm going to attack Y just so I get rid of all that. It's a console attack Q. That just means quiet mode. That's all that means. Attack Q so it just doesn't give you that cool banner. So we're not able to ping it yet. That's okay. That's plenty okay. We can go ahead and just start setting stuff up. So, use exploit multi handler, uh, set payload to Windows interpreter, reverse TCP. We'll do a stage payload. Stage payload is stages, right? So, this is stage, okay? This is stage list, alright? A stage payload means that it's going to send part of the exploit, that's going to send the rest of it after that, or more send it to different parts. A stages payload means that you can send it all at once, the very first time. That's why it's better to do like buffer overflows, like stages, so you're not trying to send part of it and then the next part. 
uh, but stage payloads are also like more uh, more secure, like it's more likely to get there than just slamming it all at once. Uh, more likely to bypass some of that. So set payload, Windows Interpreter. Okay. Set our L host to 10, whatever it is. Set our L port to 4444. Uh, we do have our shell.exe in here still. Probably try to ping that guy now. And we can ping him. Cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop into him. Um, there we go. I said the IP address anymore. Now is it? Copy that IP address. Get rid of this part. There we go. And he looks like he's doing a little better now. Okay. We are connected over there. Cool. Go ahead and save that just in case. Cool. But we are connecting under here. So let's go ahead and we're going to hop right in. We're going to go into PowerShell. I uh, should have this guy in Runtag J. Is that correct? Nope. Runtag J. Let's get his running in the background there, right? And we want to go ahead and grab a PowerShell. And we'll do a wget uh, tech URI. Windows Power, oh, that's Windows PowerShell ISE. Hopefully I get an actual PowerShell off of this. There we go. Okay, cool. Alright, um, so I got a couple, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. Okay. Go ahead and see the in the desktop here. Let me actually watch it happen. Everything. See the in desktop. Uh, DIR. What the heck? Password123. Uh, don't do. Like, stop doing whatever you're trying to do. That's weird. DIR. Okay. Uh, yeah, that we see we don't have anything really in there. Uh, so let's go ahead and upload that shell.exe. So we'll do a wget tag uri uh, http. And I forget my IP address all the time. So I'm a one. There we go. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to do shell.exe, and our out file can be shell.exe. We don't care if it gets updated or not, it's not our system. And we should be able to now period, period slash shell.exe, we should see something happening over here. And we do. And interpreter session 1 is just opened up. We go into session 1. Alright, cool. So we're back to right where we were before. From here we start uploading everything. Well, we start doing w gets for everything, but I'm just going to do an upload now. So upload access check.exe. Uh, we can upload power view. PS1. All right. And one piece dot bat. We can upload those ones right there. Upload power view. Now we should be in the desktop also, just so you know. So I should actually be able to kind of watch it. Yeah, that we are in the desktop. As you can see, if I do a DIR, we can see that we are 100% in the desktop or PWD for print working directory, not present, print working directory. Alright, and then WinPs, so we can do an upload WinPs. So, uh, press your nerd friend at your next nerd fest, you'll be like, it is print working directory, not present. The only reason I know that is because I was just watching, um, what was it, um, one of Keith Adams' videos a little bit earlier, uh, this was like last week or something like that, and he definitely says present working directory underneath in big bold letters. It says print. It says uh, like, hey, you got that wrong. So it'll be okay. All right. So we have service exploits and insecure service executables. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, throw that one piece at again and see if we can see that anywhere. So we'll throw that. Uh, go ahead and do a run one piece. Can I do that? Run one piece. Not back. Can I just do that? Like right there. No, oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry. Jesus Christ, I broke it. Came back on it. Alright, so don't do that. Obviously, you guys can see that now. Do not do that, okay? Okay, cool. Uh, session stack I. Do we even have a session anymore? We do. Session 1. Okay, we'll go ahead and go into shell, then we'll do one piece dot bat. There we go. What? Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, see, desktop. Then we'll do that same exact thing. Alright, here we go. So we are looking for, let me check this one more time. We are looking for service exploits. Okay, insecure service executable. So. Query, okay. Insecure service executables. 
Hmm. Server's binary permissions with W and I. Well, I guess I could just really just sit in here and just do this the whole time. Just all this stuff in here. Um file permission service. So I think if we're going we gotta attack that guy like right there, I believe it was right. Is that correct? File permission. Yep. You notice something that the stuff that we've been attacking have been services. Uh that's a big thing. No, I do not. Earth the O N G five zero K, whatever your name is. No. Um, but that's a big thing like right there. Um actually having Um, that that they're all running as services because if you're doing like an SQL service, you know, or something like that, then um, that can you know, yeah, obviously you can see that there can be problems stuff like that. A lot of stuff that we're going to be looking at today is services. Sorry, my son is uh, he just dropped his pillow. Okay, he's back in bed. Never mind. <laughs> probably literally his nightmare. He's pillow just fell out of bed. All right, so. Um, yeah, but we're, we're attacking services here, and if you have, like, services that are right as users, like an SQL service, something like that, that is an issue. That that can, you can cause a lot of issues with that. So that's something that you really need to look at. All right, so we are now doing the file permission service, okay? So let me go ahead and print screen this guy right here, so I can say, hey, this is what we're going to do. Okay. And we're pretty much doing the same thing again. Alright, uh, using the access check, and then it says copy the verse.exe executable you created to replace the file permission service with it. Okay, so we're literally just, we just continue to use the utilize that reverse.exe, which I don't think I even re-uploaded into here. And he's just kind of doing, you know, he's just kind of doing his own thing here, and we just keep replacing either binaries with it, registry values with it, uh, unquoted service paths, although that was common.exe. Um, what do we do with this one? I think we do with this guy too, didn't we? Change binary path, yep, some binary path, registry path. Now we're going to do the insecure, the service path for it, or service executable for it. And we're going to make another rev.exe with him. So, you see this one rev.exe has been putting in a lot of work today. Let's control Z him, we'll do, and do a set, uh, L port to 111, run attack J. Then we'll do a, uh, then we'll climb into that guy right there. So we'll go ahead and get into 10, 13, 26, 24. So, or back into, um, excuse me, back into session one. And shell. And let's go ahead and start to run this guy right here. So we have this SQ, SCQC file, like right here, right? We have this guy, right? Uh, let's go ahead and see the in a desktop also. Let me make sure actually PWD or DIR. Where's that rev.exe is actually in here. Um, can we copy? Can we do that? Rev.exe to desktop. Can we do that? Copy, see, copy. Is that command? Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and see the desktop then. And we'll do a copy, period, period, slash, rev.exe to right there. Can we do that? No. Okay, we'll figure it out. Um, control Z, yes. Can we copy from over here? Copy rev dot or copy 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 period slash rev okay. copy rev dot exe to desktop. Nice design, okay. Uh, what about delete? What about just copy it there, delete it, and going to somewhere else? We're going to leave it like that. Never mind. We'll just do this. We'll just leave it like that. We just know that rev.exe is not in desktop. He's in C user's user or whatever. We don't even actually need to be in there. Oh, well, I see. So we got that SC, SC file, right? SCQC file permissions. We can see that it is local system. So we should be uh, NT system authority when it's all said and done. Okay. From here, we use the asset check, note service binary path, right? So, we do need to actually get that service binary path, which we did already find with windows.bat, but we can go ahead and cd that desktop, and we can do that access check, 
or yeah, we can do that. Uh, access check 64, I believe, because I already have it. DIR access check.exe. So we do that um, access check.exe except the EULA. Boom, boom, and see where the heck is this sort of binary path name file is writable by everyone. Let's go ahead and see. And it is read and write built in user file access, so it is. Okay, it's writable by everybody. Okay. At least that's what it's looking like, like right here. And it really, yeah, everyone. There we go, everyone. And NT system authority. So by the time we're done with this, we're hoping to become NT authority. Right. I have copied the reverse exe XP we created, replace the file from perm service.exe with it. So we are going to copy. Let's go ahead and cd that back. So we are going to copy rev.exe. Right. And we are going to then put that into the binary, right? So we got to do that like right there. Wherever the heck this guy's actually running right here, right? Boom. Okay. Control shift V there. Okay. Um and then it's gonna ask us, hey, are you sure? We're gonna do a slash yes, I believe. Oh, it's a capital Y. Slash Y. Let's try that. And we did, we copied it. Um looks like one file is copied. Okay, cool. And now we just have to start that service. Or we'd have to stop it, then start it. Uh, let's go ahead, control Z, yes, um, control Z, yes. Do I have something running in the background? I think I do, because I had a... Okay, cool. So it looks like I already have something running in the background. Um, I just want to kill tab tab. It showed a 1 on there. So I'm just going to go with something running. So let's go ahead and go right back into here. We'll go back to that shell. And now we're going to start that service. And we get the interpreter session open now again. And there we are. Okay, so you see that? Yep, sure enough, we got our interpreter session opened up. So pretty much we just copied over one to the other. So control Z, control Z, sessions two. Um, then we can do a get UID, and I should be, yep, NT system authority. We did die, that's okay, because we noticed that last time as soon as we migrated something else, we were good. Um, this thing's also been acting a little bit strange for me, as you can tell. So there we go, so we're done with that one now. Um, I think that's going to be it for me for today. I did quite a few of them. I did, I mean, I did the first six tasks there today. We have some registry stuff. Uh, we could skip a little bit and then start doing some password stuff if we wanted to. Like we could load Kiwi, could do a little. Oh, we can't anymore. One session one. Otherwise, do it like that. But could um, if we really wanted to, we could like load Kiwi, grab the hash, try to pass the hash, things like that. Um, could do those type of different things. Could try to make schedule tasks. Is your GUI apps okay? But we'll um, we'll get back to that stuff. We will definitely get back to all that stuff. We'll just work our way down. Uh, and that will be about it. I'm surprised there's no, nothing with DLL in here. Um, I did make a box. It's still, I still don't know if it's bought on yet. It still is under submitted. But I did make a box for DLL hijacking that submitted uh, a while ago, actually. Usually I probably get told that, hey, your box is not allowed to be here. But um, this one's actually been sitting here for a minute. So hopefully it is. Maybe. You never know. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's going to be about it for today. Thanks for watching. I said next time you get on, you'll probably be, uh, I'll be on tomorrow. And yeah, you guys have a good one. Alright, so welcome back. So we're going to be doing the, some more Windows Privesk. Um, I have not gone actually into the guy yet. But, um, I think shell.exe is still running. I do have the server down here still for HTTP server so I think shell.exe will still be a good one to use but we'll go ahead and give it a try I do have a job already running in the background up here so let's go ahead and open up a PowerShell and we'll try to uh, at least get some type of reverse shell going here so we'll do our wget pack uri 
There's that. So I have to big like real quick. Get my IP address. There we go. Throw that in there. Uh, slash shell.exe, I think it was called. And we'll do an out file of shell.exe. All right, we got that. So let's go ahead and do a see if we can run it. And let's see if we get anything back over here. Okay, cool. We do get a stage back over here. Hopefully it works. I don't remember if I did x64 or not. Let's go ahead and go into session one and get UID. And we are just user. Okay, so that works so far. So what we're looking at this time is registry R runs. Let's go ahead and upload the different stuff that we had before also. So we'll upload, um, no, don't want to look at all the different possibilities. Ooh, am I in the right spot here? I don't think I'm actually in the right spot. I'm going to exit out of here. Exit attack Y. So I got the actually CD in the desktop. Try to hack me. Um, learning pass, offense pen testing. And that's going to be Windows Privesque. There we go. Get back into MSF console. We'll go ahead and we'll do a run tag J again and run that guy over there again. Exploit multi handler. Set the L host. That's 10. L port's already 4444. Set payload. That's Windows interpreter. Reverse TCP. And we'll go ahead and run that. And then we can just go ahead and uh, do that again, and we should get it. There we go. Get our call back. We get our interpreter session opened up. Now we start uploading everything. Just in case I need that. And we'll do an upload of, uh, we need our access check, right? .exe. We need to upload our um, winpeas.bat. We'll upload those two things. So upload winpeas.bat. Let me see where I am like right now too. We'll do a PWD for my print working directory versus the user. Okay. Um, and that should be, oh, and upload our rev.exe. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and delete that. Ah, uh, that's 1111. I think it's just, I don't think we did X64 that one either. Probably look back in my notes and see exactly what we did for that one. Um, I don't remember what we did for reverse. That's common. I think for reverse, we common with the X64. I think for reverse, we just did a regular 32 bit operation there. So let's go ahead and uh, add in another one of these guys down here. And we will do registry auto runs. All right, cool. So I'll back in here. We will do registry auto runs. All right. And for this one like right here, we have our query the registry for all run executables. All right, so we have a reg query, boom, boom. Let me go ahead and take a print screen of this first. Actually, a change of the name. Maybe it's going to be program.exe, not rev.exe this time. So we'll throw that into here. And the very first thing we're going to do is our reg query for to see what's uh, for our all run executables. So we'll start up a shell with this guy paste him in there and we're not going to get anything with that current version so it's not able to find anything with that query like right there a series and ask check you see no all run executables written available with everyone and create the registry for all run executables let's see here. let's go ahead and look that up Query um, reg for auto runs. Command line. Let's just wait with auto runs, hack tricks. Here we go. Okay, so we have WMIC, can be used to run programs of startup, schedule task, folders, registry. Commonly known auto run registries. Okay, let's see what this is. If we do that. So we're going to do a reg query that didn't give us anything like right there it's going to own software this software is all in caps this one is not command 
go ahead and see if we can actually get to because it will be easier on the GUI interface to actually be able to see that, huh? Um, I forget how to look that up though on the query interface or on the GUI interface. Maybe do it with PowerShell. Something like this. PowerShell, and then we'll try like this maybe. Nothing. What about software all caps? We'll do that. No. Nothing. Okay, so that's kind of weird. Let's go ahead and we'll hop back into here and we'll try. Myvin. Yeah. Okay. And we'll just uh, we'll just continue on. It's kind of weird. I'll look at that later. Using access checked.exe. Note that the R run executable is writable by everyone. So the R run executable. So we can look at that access checked.exe again. Um, so we can do access check. Access check.exe, right? Is that how it's spelled? Oh, nothing wants to work for me right now, huh? Did I upload? I thought I uploaded access check in here. Maybe not. Yeah, access check.exe. Okay, let's go ahead and go into PowerShell and see if we can run that like that. Right now, the guy doesn't really want to. Messed up. Shell. PowerShell. Period, period, slash. There we go. Uh, so, nothing wants to run for me like right now, huh? It's probably because I need to actually run it against something. Maybe I need to do a little. There you go. Let's try it like that. Right there. Back in the shell. Do it like that. There we go. Okay. So we got that. I'm sure that if we did uh, the win piece. Not that we would actually see that for startup or R run programs, we would see that in there. Unquote service pass. Yeah, we'll look in there. We do see we do have read and write by everyone for program.exe. I'm going to throw that back into here. That information is right there. Next thing he wants to do is copy the reverse executable that we made to program.exe. So we are going to use that rev.exe again. DLL hijacking. Currently stored credentials. Unattended files. Okay. So let that guy keep writing in. Also, we find everything in there, but I'm going to hop in here because we've done this quite a few times now with copy and everything like that. So we'll go ahead and we'll copy over our reverse.exe to our C programs with auto run slash yes into there. So let's go ahead and copy um, rev.exe over into there. Okay, now remember our rev.exe. Um, do I already have a no. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a um, set L port to 1111. And remember, uh, we'll set our payload to Windows Interpreter. Let's 
interpreter dot slash reverse TCP. Then we'll go ahead and run tack J that. So that'll be running the background right. From here we'll get back into our session one. And we'll go ahead and get back into our shell. And now what we want to do is just run that program that the that exe. So start listening on Kali, then restart the Windows VM. Open up a new RDP session to trigger a reverse shell. Uh, running with added privileges, so we need to restart the VM. So it's not fire as long as the admin and passwords trigger it. Now the real world engaged, we have to wait for administrator login themselves. So we want to restart the program. Um, I always forget how to restart a VM. Restart Windows VM command line. I know that IND actually teaches you this. IND actually has it like straight up like hey. We don't want to do control delete, command line, restart, type shutdown slash I. There we go. To display the remote shutdown dialog. Um, and I think that actually restarts it, shutdown slash I. Third way to basically restart first proceeding running Windows 7. Boom. Okay. Yeah. You need to shut down command, something like, yeah, so shutdown slash I. We'll give you a GUI where you can have multiple machines to reboot. Display the remote shutdown dialog. So let's just try shutdown slash I and see if that works. And that should also kill our session too. So if our sessions don't die, then we know that that one did not go through. Should kill that one session. Could always go up here, start, and then just restart like this also. Go to power. And then restart it. You can always do that too. But there is also a way to be able to do it on a on a command line. I know that. Yeah, other plan, whatever. It doesn't. It's not like it really matters. Sure. Continue. Just got restarting. It looks like I can't click on. Oh, can I click on them? No, I can't click on anything that anymore. I should have lost my session over here. There we go. Interpreter session one did, did shut down. Okay. Uh, but I still have that other session running in the background. As you can see, kill zero. We could run that. That's going to stop the other session. But once this restarts, we should see a session come up and running over here because I do have a session running in the background. Or uh, exploit multi handler with rev.exe. Now, restarting it, that's not like terminating it in here and then reopening it. Just so you know, uh, this is much easier to do obviously on a VM that you built yourself <clears throat> because then you know it obviously keeps the information in there. If we were to terminate it on this guy and then bring it back, we lose everything on there, pretty much clears everything out, comes back in. So let's go ahead and try to get back into it again. And see if he has restarted yet. If we're getting on desktop, the user, it was a user, right? What's the password again? Password is, I think it's just password123, if I remember. Yep, password321. Password321. Okay, and did we get anything over here? We have not, no. Alright, so let's go ahead and we'll kill zero. Let's go ahead and um, get back inside this guy and we'll try stuff again. So let's go ahead and go back into PowerShell. Uh, from here we can DIR. We still have everything in here as you can see. We're going to go ahead and delete. Is it remove or delete? I think it's DEL, right? Delete um, rev.exe. No. Okay. There we go. So let's go ahead and create another rev.exe. We'll re upload him. And let's first do a um, set the L port to 444. We'll run that. And we'll go ahead and 
shell. Oh, crap, I hit tab. What was I thinking? Shell.ac. That should get that guy up and running over there. Let's go ahead and create another reverse rev.exe. Remove tag all rev, rev.exe. And we'll go ahead and do an MSF Venom. So yeah, we were correct. Okay. Our port is 1111. So we'll go ahead and upload him again. Here's where we're at first. Put CD in the desktop. Alright, cool. And we'll go ahead and upload rev.exe. Yeah. Alright. Now from here we can go ahead and try to copy that over again to that programs part right. So we can copy rev.exe. I don't think I ever changed that either. I think we actually left that as reverse, didn't we? No, I think I, I did it right. Because I typed in copy. So we'll go ahead and go back into a shell. We'll try to copy rev.exe to C program files. Boom, boom. That's not going to work like right there. So I didn't grab U. Yeah, U. There we go. So let's try to copy rev.exe over to here. Yes, okay, cool. So suppose we copied rev.exe over as program.exe and control Z, yes. And we'll go ahead and do a background on those two. Set the L port to 1111. Set the payload to Windows um, interpreter reverse. TCP, run that in the background, go back into session one, or session two, excuse me, shell, and we can go ahead and restart this guy over here and see if we actually get anything. So let's try to restart him again. Restart, continue. He dies, he's restarting. Once he's restarted, we should be able to, we should be able to uh, hop right in there because that's a startup program. Still have that one run in the background. So now we need to do our desktop back into him. And let's see if this actually works. If not, then this is something that we'll do. Um, like whenever we set up our own network, we'll do something like this. And have it so. What happened? Oh. Oh, okay. Nothing yet. I still haven't been able to ping it yet. Oh, desktop not hopping in. This guy's taking a minute now, huh? Okay, now we're pinging. There we go. Load desktop back into there. User password 321. And hopefully we get something over here. If not, like I said, we'll do it uh, whenever we actually make our own little thing. User password 321. Now what I'm wondering is if I have to actually log in as an administrator. For this thing to actually run, wondering that now. That's what I'm really thinking we have to do. Nope, nope. There we go. We get our interpreter session three is now opened. So cool. So let me go ahead and go back into here. And just say all right, copied reverse rev.exe to program.exe, just like above. We started the VM and then log back into it. And it ran the exploit. So we ran that exploit. So cool, that one did work. Um, we ended up seeing, hey, yep. 
session three. Get UID. I should be. Oh, I'm user again. Um, oh, if I logged in as an admin, that would have been admin. So if we logged in like that, we would have been admin because uh, we did. Obviously, this thing came back up and running. So that's why. Okay. So yeah, we would have had to wait for an admin login or kind of tap it correctly or whatever else. Um, okay, cool. So let's see what we can do next. Next thing we can do is we complete that one. Always install elevated. This is also another issue. Um, this one's pretty good. So let's go ahead. It should be HKLM. Let's go ahead and grab this, like right here. We'll do a shell. And since we have that one, like right there, that means that always install elevated is up and running. That's what that one means, like right there. So let me go ahead and make some new notes here. Go back in here. Oh, my son just woke up, so it looks like this might be the last one. Always install elevated. And I don't think that's actually a service exploit anymore also. Yeah, it's registry. That's why. So is the auto run thing. That's also registry. So let me go ahead and make a whole new thing over here. Cancel. And we'll do a new guy down here. Always install elevated. Elevated. Or excuse me, this should actually say registry. Uh, you know, change no properties registry. Put the registry auto run like right there, underneath that guy, and then always install elevated. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and we already did that guy, All right? So let me go ahead and uh, copy this guy over. Task eight. Bam. Okay. And we will copy him into here. And we already did our always, we already showed that yes, always install elevated is up and running with that 0x1. If it says 0x0, then it's not up and running. Just so you know, 0x1 tells us that always install elevated is running. Oh, and Flex wanted to say what's up. Flex Media, I guess it's updating. All right, so now what we can do is we can go ahead and start to mess with always install elevated. We can actually use uh, Metasploit to actually do that with a reverse MSI, okay, or whatever you want to call it, that MSI. So let's go ahead and make an MSF Venom. Venom, tap P, uh, Windows, whoa. Tap P, Windows. I don't know if we can do interpreter this one. We'll try it first. We'll try it with an interpreter, x64, interpreter. We'll try it like that, reverse. Um, I don't think with always install elevated though, I think we want that to be a stageless payload. All right, uh, let me make sure that IP address is correct. I have config 10.13, nope, 10.13, 26.24, 26.184. We'll set the L port to, whoopsie daisy, that's 100% not what I want to do. We will set the L port to 6666. Tag, I think it'll be an MSI file. We'll call this rev.msi. Go ahead and exit out of here, and we will upload rev.msi. No platform selected, choosing, okay, Windows payload, yeah, okay. No arc selected, MSI buffer is not large enough to hold a P file. Did I mess something up there? Okay, no, rev.msi. So we'll go ahead and upload that rev access denied. Okay, where am I? Directory, is it because I can't upload a MSI file, or? Okay, that's why. Let's go ahead and do a um, cd into c users user uh, desktop. Cool. And we are now going to upload that rev.msi. Okay. So we uploaded that right. We made it uh, that guy right there. And let's go ahead and start another listener here. So let's control Z that, yes. Uh, set the L port to 6666. And then we'll do set the uh, payload to Windows slash x64 slash interpreter. ETERP. Why am I having such a hard problem typing interpreter today? Interpreter reverse TCP. Okay, and we'll run that. Run tag J. Run that in the background. Go back into session three and go back into a um, shell and then from here
go ahead and run that guy. It's always installed all elevated. Boom, boom. Um, so we did that. We already put them in there. And then we're just going to do this. We're actually not going to be in C Prevest reverse MSI though. We're actually just going to do it just rev. Actually, you may want to see that that's users, user, desktop, rev.msi. That's all right where it's going. All right. Yep, that's all good. Um, I'm enter there. Cannot contact that. Verify this is valid Windows installer package. Either that's okay. I think it is. Started listening on Kelly and run the program trigger the reverse shell. Use that some earlier. And we did not trigger the reverse shell though. So I'm wondering if maybe we shouldn't use Meterpreter for this one. Um, let's go ahead and do a Windows X64 shell reverse TCP. Try like that. We can go ahead and delete rev.msi from here. And now what we can do is let's go ahead and throw that into there. So let's go back. Control Z, yes. We'll go ahead and upload that rev.msi again. Which this one should just overrule that last one. And it did. And from here we go back to the shell. And then we'll uh, try to run that again. That command that we ran before. This guy right here, MSI exec. Execute quiet, and this is just going to be C users user desktop web dot MSI. Oh, my interpreter session just opened up. Okay, so we got my interpreter session to open up probably because I forgot to reset the payload, huh? So that's most likely going to die, but that's okay. We did get a interpreter session to open up, which I'm kind of actually kind of fused about that we got that to open up, but um, it's most likely going to die, or it's not going to be very stable. Um, make sure to run a listener in the background, and then from here, we went ahead and threw in our command to get that guy to open up. Bam. All right, cool. So we have completed that one. Um, all the next ones are passwords. Like I said, my son just woke up, so that will be it for this video, like right here. So a couple problems with the all run thing, but we got that figured out. So that was pretty good. Uh, we got that registry figured out for always install elevated. Um, I believe that we can actually search for always install. Is it like that? Yeah, always install elevated. Actually, use zero. Let's go ahead and show options. I want to see somebody real quick. Show options. So set our L host to 10. Set our L port to 66, I guess. Uh, I guess all we really need to do is actually just session. So let's go ahead and set the L4 to 5, 5, 5. Set session to 3, I believe it was, right? Session tech guy. We'll set the session set session to 3. And I think I can just run this. Let's try run. I know that with um, version 6 there's problems with this. I wonder if version 5 there is. And it's looking like we got it. So that's another way to be able to do it like right there. Alright, I know that with version 6 I've had problems with that. Uh, looks like version 5, no problems, and we just got another guy opened up there. So, we can go ahead and I'm going to take a little copy of this like, real quick. So there's another way to be able to do it. Let's say I know there's more than one way to be able to do this one like right here. Super easy that way, obviously, we're just in a session. And now once we're that, just so you know, if I go into a, the other interpreter session, do we get UID? Um, I should be, um, I should be uh, NT system authority. So we can show that. 
real quick, showing that I did get NT get UID, NT system authority. There you go. Okay, if I go into session five or whatever, because uh, I don't know what session I'm in, like right now, I just want to exit out of this one. Okay, I was in session five. So we can see that, yep, I was NT system authority, and that's the one that opened up whenever I did all this. So that's what always install elevate allows you to do with a dot MSI file. So obviously that is an issue. Um, but yeah, like I said, that'll be it for today. So for this afternoon, I uh, hope you guys learned something. I know that with the R run thing, I know that I did. And uh, yeah, you guys have a good one, and I will see you this evening.